Hi, my name is Noam Kostyuki, and as you can hear from my accent and see from my name, I'm a typical Londoner. <laughs> Born in, like, I was one of these kids who had ADHD and dyslexia, which means that I can't sit and write, and explains why I'm here. My job is to stand and talk. So people often want then to ask me, what is it you talk about? I talk about how to go from dreams to reality. I give training and coaching to people on how to get what you want. Generally, a combination of making money and doing what you love. And then I'm asked to do the same for organizations. And I teach companies and charities how to get what they want. Generally, a combination of making money and doing good. So what's the dream that we want to share today? And how is it that we're going to make it reality? If we look around at the news, we see that there's something brewing out there. We're on the verge of a turning point. We either are going to collapse as a species from a global epidemic of organizational diseases, and don't worry, we'll only be one of the 137 species that die every day, or we'll take the challenge of evolution and adapt. This is a little bit of preventive medicine for organizations, I guess. Charities are anorexic. Companies are obese. The government is a big, fat, clogged artery. And definitely, the last financial crisis was a stroke. So today, I want to share three thoughts with you. One, why is it that making money from doing good is the cure to this, to this global epidemic? Two, if we're going to evolve as a species, how, how is it going to look like? And three, what is it you can do about this global evolution? So I always remember when I was a kid, when I was 10, I went to a restaurant for homeless. And there was this woman who didn't exist. She had no ID card, no passport, and she couldn't remember her name, where she was born, or when she was born. Effectively, she didn't exist. I had never seen such a poor person in my life, and I was so shocked. And I remember the thoughts that I had as a 10-year-old. Being poor really sucks. I don't want to be poor. And then we talked to her and gave her some clothes that we brought with her. And the warmth of her smile and the look in her, in her eyes just resonated. And that brought another thought, which was helping others makes you feel so good. When I grow up, I want to help as many people as I can. And this is combined, these two thoughts. That is the concept we're talking about today. I believe that everyone can make money from doing good. So do you make a lot of money, grow old, and realize that money is not enough to be happy? Or do you do good for your whole life and live miserably? John is this guy that you all know, but you don't really look at him. He's the homeless guy around the corner who just needs a bit of money to, to eat. When John Burr was homeless, he went to see homeless charities to propose them to employ homeless people to sell newspapers. And the answer was, John. You're wasting your time. It's never going to work. You can't trust homeless people. So John Bird went ahead and started a big issue that now sells to 670,000 people in the UK and is published in eight countries. When Jamie Oliver went to see school headmasters to improve the food that kids eat, they said the same thing. Jamie, you're wasting your time. Kids only want to eat junk. And when I dropped out of university because all I'd learned there was to get a too good tolerance to alcohol, I wrote for them a 20-page document on how to improve the student experience. And the answer from the Dean of Education will always be remembered for me, legendarily, and I quote, we don't have time and money to waste on students. <laughs> so you'll all agree that if a homeless guy can make money from doing good, the problem is not whether you have the right knowledge or tools, but how good you will feel once you've succeeded in making money from doing good. And obviously, there will be obstacles. There'll be plenty of people, stubborn people, who'll tell you it's impossible. So wherever you are, young or old, rich or poor, educated or not, don't ever give up on your dreams. Don't ever give up on living with purpose. And you'll find plenty of examples out there of people from all backgrounds and in all fields who've done what they love, 
done good for the world and made a living as a result of it. Just Google social entrepreneurs. And you'll find plenty of examples, like Tom Shoes, that gives a free pair of shoes for every pair you buy. Or the Jojo product that plants a tree for every pair you buy. One water sells commercial water and use the profits to build roundabouts in Africa where there's no water and no playgrounds. As the kids spin around, they pump water up a tower and bring water to the whole village and the surrounding ones. So these people succeed because they're passionate. What else would you expect than enthusiasm, happiness, and fulfillment when your job is to make the world a better place? And I've experienced the same. The more good I do, the more money I make. And the more money I make, the more good I do. So what all these have in common is what we call purpose with profits. So the big secret to making money from doing good is simply, wonderfully, and beautifully doing what you love. So you can already spread this big idea. Now, if you do what you love, you'll get great at it. If you get good at it, you'll be able to add value to others. And when you can add value to others, you can do all the good and make all the money you want. So what happens if we all start doing what we love? And if all organizations are not for profit or non-profit, but for purpose? It might sound a bit crazy, but that's actually how we got here. Last century was this war on imperfection. We tried to perfect everything, and we gotten great at it. Look at our life expectancy. In 1900, it was 30 years old. Nowadays, in countries like Japan, it's 82. And the oldest people alive are 114. All of that in the last 100 years. We've learned to produce in mass, medicine, education, technology, even democracy. So we've been on this quest to find the perfect solution to every problem. And the good news is that we found it. The perfect solution to every problem is that there isn't one, but many that need to be used in parallel and need to evolve all the time. And this is why my biggest fear is acceptance of the way things are. If we don't accept that things are good enough the way they are now, and if we revolt against the norms, we can achieve amazing results in which everyone wins. Like when the more good you do, the more money you make. So last century, the organization that was successful, they were the one that made a lot of money. Now, today, the organization that thrive are the one that make money from doing good. So what does the world look like when all of you start doing what you love and make money from doing good? We have reached a point where we connected in a way like never before. Thanks to computers, phones, there's this electric signal that we use to communicate. And that's very similar to our brain, where you've got neurons that communicate with each other through electric signals. Our body is a bunch of cells all working together. The same way as every organization is a bunch of people working together. Our body is more than the sum of all the individual cells. The same way as all our companies, charities, and government are more than the sum of the people in them. So this wireless technology has given us the unique ability to evolve as a species. And I find that amazing. So once we start behaving more like organism, we realize that if a cell in your body doesn't fulfill its purpose, what happens? You die. So if all of us don't fulfill our purpose as a species, we will die. Nature doesn't care about perfection or hierarchy. Diversity is king. And your stomach doesn't hide to your liver that last night you had a chocolate pie. Right? So we need systems that are chaotic and can evolve all the time, that are democratic, so that we can get the best of all the parts. We need transparent communication so that every part knows what's going on and that we can all do our best. And finally, we need a system that allows the individual and the collective to both thrive. 
a sort of healthy balance between competition and collaboration. So once we get good at that, we'll reach what um, I see as democracy 2.0, where all of us will have on our mobile an app with all the laws to be passed. And like on Reddit, you vote up the ones you like and down the ones you don't like. <laughs> and then all government projects and initiatives will be like tenders, uh, tenders like on Kiva. So any of you and any organization can, can propose their solution. And all of us will um, effectively vote with our taxes. So you'll allocate directly your tax to the project that interests you most. Once they get enough money, they get launched. And as they're all online, you can track in real time the progress, which means that the organization and people finally become accountable and responsible for what they do. And I guess that's how we'll finally know who to vote for. I'll be a bit more precise. So as this evolution goes, we're repeating human evolution but at the organizational level. And that will bring a tremendous amount of changes in development, like building maybe organ tribes of organizations. And I think that eventually, we all know what's going to happen. We'll get a chip in our brain, right? So that we're connected to the internet all the time. When I press on this button, you can see what I see. You can taste what I taste. You can feel what I feel. We can all then, you can all pull information from the web and from the collective mind the same way as you do it from your own memory now. And I know that might sound scary for some of us, but we all know it's going to happen one way or another. We've never stopped to evolve. We're all made of both good and evil. So I believe we need to harness the good in the inevitability of evolution. And of course, there'll be people who take advantage of the system. And that's why I'm asking you to keep on dreaming of ways to make the world a better place. And the way to make it reality is when you start making money from doing good. Like Edmund Burke said, all that is needed for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And I guess this is why I'm standing here today. Because I want to tell what you can do to help us evolve as a species. So we talked about earlier that we need systems that are evolving all the time, like Wikipedia, that are democratic, so that we can get the most out of everyone, like Reddit. We need open and transparent communication. And that's why I'm thrilled that organizations like TED spread ideas that shine. And organizations like WikiLeak, WikiLeak that shine the light on what happens in darkness. So, the last piece of the puzzle is finding this sweet spot between cooperation and collaboration. This healthy balance that makes life sustainable. And so this is why I'm asking you to spread the idea that we can all make money from doing good. Our obsession with money is like our obsession with food. Too much of it is not good for you. But too little is equally bad. So we can help more people in more ways if we allow ourselves to profit from our charitable pursuits. We can teach our children that they can live greater lives from helping others. Our kids, we don't have to choose between doing good and making money. We can all learn to make a living from helping others. So, I invite you, all of you, to look at the truth that we can make this world a better place from making money. And at the end of my talk, please, talk to the people next to you and try to see if there's someone who can help you make money from doing good. So I wish for each and every one of you to make millions from making this world a better place. Thank you.